Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about and showing you guys my favorite brushes that I use when I'm painting and refinishing and waxing furniture. I'm also gonna show you how I clean and take care of my brushes so that they look good and last a long time. So if you wanna learn all about my favorite brushes today, just keep watching. <laughs> If you are new here, I am a furniture painter and refinisher and you will find me on here doing furniture makeovers, talking about paint, wax, everything having to do with refinishing furniture. So if you'd like to learn more about that, please consider subscribing before you leave and hit that bell notification because it's gonna notify you anytime I upload a video. So I get questions from you guys and DMs and comments on my videos daily and I try to do my best to answer those in a timely fashion, but this one just keeps coming up so much that I just decided to make a video for everybody. I get questions a lot on what brush I should use for what project, which one do you like the best? And I have been getting lots and lots of questions about how do I clean and take care of my brushes. So I'm gonna be covering all of that today. So let's jump in and I will show you what I got. My favorite brush for chalk paint or chalk-like paint. So anything like Annie Sloan, Jolie, Chalk by Waverly, um, any of those other ones, I like to use a natural bristle brush. And my favorite one right now is the Jolie Signature Small Brush. It's small enough that I can get into detail, but it's big enough to cover like a whole area. It gives me great range for doing texture, but I can also get a smooth look like this, just depending on how I do my brush strokes. But I can get like a lot of texture and stuff with this as well. So I think it's a really versatile brush and it's big enough that it helps you do like a dresser or a table, but it also works on small projects as well. And it's really, ergonomically correct. It's kind of flat on the sides here. So it's just really comfortable when you hold it. And this metal piece, the way that they've designed it, it doesn't rust at all. So it keeps its shape really well and performs really well for me. When I'm working with a chalk paint or another type of furniture paint that I wanna get a smooth look, I prefer using a synthetic brush. And two of my favorites are from Dixie Belle. This is the mini and this is the mini angle. I prefer the angle just because I like a sash brush. I think it helps me get in the detail, but both of these basically do the same thing. So if you're more of like a flat type of person, you can use either one of these. I love the short handle. They're really easy to use. I used this on my Dixie Belle dresser that I recently did that's become a really popular video and it just worked really beautifully on that piece of furniture. Some other synthetic brushes that I'm a big fan of lately are Zebra. And you guys have heard me talk about them before. They really support furniture painters, which I love. They're not specifically designed for furniture painting, but they have a bunch of different ones that I like working with. Again, they're synthetic and smooth. I used this Palm Pro with milk paint and it made a really beautiful effect, was super easy. Again, these short brushes I'm a big fan of and I'm a big fan of sash brushes because you can get in angles and details and this is gonna give you a really smooth finish. This is my favorite zebra brush that I've worked with. This is the square brush and you can see that it's angled. Again, it's that soft synthetic bristles that are gonna give you a smooth finish. But the shape of this just really helps you get into detail. I used this to do the trim on my son's bunk bed. Um, and I also used it on that chippy barn hutch. And it just helps you get in the details really easily without, you know, globbing a lot of paint on. So it's nice to have some of these smaller brushes to get that detailed work. And then the last set of paint brushes I wanna talk about are these Jolie Artist Brushes. These are really nice. These are synthetic as well and clean up really nicely, but they give you four different brushes in here to help you get into detailed work. These could be also really cool if you wanna do some type of detailed work like a portrait or something or flowers or something more artistic on your furniture. That's not my thing. I don't know how to do that, but I've seen a lot of people do that. But this actually gets in the detail really well. I've used these brushes to apply wax and gilding wax and they clean up very nicely and hold their shape. Um, so I love having a pack of these artist brushes in my arsenal. So that's it with paint brushes. Um, one paint brush that I don't have that I want to talk about. I started out painting with a pretty white bristle two inch sash brush and they have natural bristle brushes and it's more of an affordable price point. I painted with this for years before I was able to afford other brushes. Now that I have these nice brushes, I don't, I wasn't reaching for that one as much and then it finally just like crapped out on me and I haven't replaced it because I have all these other really good brushes. 
But if cost is an issue for you or you're just starting out and you don't know if you wanna invest in expensive brushes, I would definitely start with that one. But I really should get a replacement just so I can actually physically show it to you guys. And I haven't painted with it in forever, so it might be fun to pick it back up and try to use it again and see if I still like it as much as I did back in the day. Okay, moving on to wax brushes. My favorite wax brush right now is the Jolie Large Wax brush. Um, that wax brush is really hard to say. I've had to say it like five times. Um, I like how large it is. It makes it really super easy to do a tabletop. For something big like my headboard that I did, it just helps you get a really big, large, flat surface easily. I also like their pointed one because you can get into detailed work, but if I could only afford to buy one, I think I would buy this one just because it's gonna help you get jobs done faster. And again, I always say this, you can apply wax with a cloth to start out with. You don't have to buy a brush right away, but because I have brushes, I always use them. That's my preferred method for putting wax on, um, and it's definitely worth the investment. It's holding up really well, and it cleans up really well, which I'll talk to you about in a bit. And then my last wax brush I wanna talk about is my wax brush that is dedicated to dark wax. This thing is so old and really well loved, but they actually just sent me a new one, so let me grab that one. <laughs> so they actually sent me a new one, because they saw me mention this on my chalk paint tour closet video. So this is the waxing brush. This is what it looks like brand new. Um, this is one that has been well left. It's been around for six years and it is still working and um, going strong. I like to have a dedicated dark wax brush um, or just a colored wax brush because it's really hard to get this dark completely off. And if you try to clear wax something with this, it's gonna activate the dark and it's gonna get muddy and not good. So I like to keep my clear wax brush and my colored ones separate. And this one has been just a go-to for dark wax. I just used it in my last video and it still works great. And um, just the size and the shape of it, how it's nice and flat, I just really like this for doing shading on my pieces with dark wax. I'm gonna link all these brushes down in the description box so it's easy for you guys to find them. Okay, now that we've gone through all my brushes and why I love them, let me take you to my utility sink and show you how to clean them. When I am cleaning my brushes, warm water is your best friend. With most of the paints that I use, they are water-based and they clean up really easily. So I just start with running a little warm water over them and squeezing out as much paint as I can. And if the water's not running clear or usually just to get that last bit of paint off, I will take a little bit of Dawn dish detergent, rub that on my hand and rub the brush gently in there. Dawn is a great gentle soap to use and it cuts grease. And if it's good enough for little ducks that they clean up that get into oil spills, I think it's good enough for my brushes. When you're cleaning, you just wanna use really gentle pressure. Don't jam those bristles into your hand. You don't wanna fray them or split them. So I'm just using really gentle swirling motions to work a lather up and then again I'm going to rinse it and just squeeze that water out and I'm really looking for my water to run clear and the suds to run clear so I know that all that residue is rinsed off. Once the brush is clean, I take a paper towel and smooth out all my bristles, and then I wrap that around to help the brush hold its shape as it dries. And I just put a little piece of painter's tape on that. Then you can either lay that flat or hang it upside down to dry. I have some hooks where my brooms and stuff hang and that's usually where I keep all my brushes while they're drying. For my wax brushes, you could use Dawn soap, but I typically use lye soap because it's what's recommended by manufacturers of these brushes. There's just something in lye that helps break down that wax and help you get all that residue off. I take it and get a little bit of that lye soap on there. Again, do that same rubbing gentle motion in my hand to kind of get the wax broken down a little bit. I 
use my thumb and finger to work that out and squeeze it out the top and just rinse that off. So I kind of do this process back and forth until I'm happy with the amount of wax that's off. And then same thing when I'm done and my water's running clear and it doesn't feel sticky anymore, I smooth all those bristles out, wrap it in the paper towel and either lay it flat or hang it up to dry. And a wax brush is gonna be pretty stiff after it dries. So I just take it and rub it back and forth and flick the bristles a little bit just to um, kind of get it back to its soft shape. And another tip for keeping your brushes looking great, if they come in a case or come with a case, I like to put that back on when it's dry because it's just gonna help the brush hold its shape. All the zebra brushes are like that, so I try to keep those cases on there after they dry completely. Thank you guys for joining me for today's video. If you have any questions about my cleaning process or any of these brushes, you can leave those down in the comment box below. Like this video, don't forget to subscribe. I will be back with another project next week. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I'll see you next time. A large wax brush. Blah, blah, blah. That's hard to say. <laughs> Cost isn't blah, like my, uh, what's that called? Look like, especially when I'm day. So let's just jump into the brushes. Now is starting my quiet time, okay? So I need 30 minutes of quiet time. Go play in your room, okay? No. Go, okay. The struggle is real.